Hey everyone, I'm Meredith and I am here with the one and only Tim Schaefer of Double Fine Productions and we're going to do a Double Fine double feature. Yeah. So let's get right into it with Psychonauts awesome. in the Rhombus of Ruin. Thanks for now having me. Now this is, oh thank you for being here. Yeah. I'm so glad we get to sit down. We got like one tiny little moment at PSX to chat. And talk about Psychonauts. And talk about Psychonauts, which Ooh. I'm so excited about. Now this is a puzzle game that kind of bridges the gap between yep. one and two. Between talk a little about that. Yeah, the second last one ended 10 years ago, but this picks up that very second the game ends and tells the story of, uh, if you remember, the first game ended with um, Raz saves the day, he becomes a psychonaut, but the head, the grand head of the psychonauts is kidnapped by a mysterious right. entity. And the uh, grand head of the psychonauts is named Truman Zanotto, happens to be the father of Lily Zanotto, who's Raz's girlfriend. And so they all jump into this fancy jet and they take off, and that's the end of the game. Credits rolled. And we never uh, told the story of what happens on that mission. Do you get that question a lot? Are people are like, what happened We're to him? Mission. Where did he go? <laughs> I was like, oh, we'll get to it someday. <laughs> We're waiting for the technology of right. VR to <laughs> catch up with us. So um, this is the mission. And you are going to start in the jet just seconds after the um, original game ends. Raz is kind of in his mental world here, seeing figments, as you'll remember. A little, there's a little recap in case you, you don't have to play the first game to okay. enjoy this. And it catches you up on what Raz is doing. Um, and then you're going to be in the jet. And uh, the difference between this and Psychonauts is that it's not a 3D platformer. Uh, it's uh, more of a puzzle-based game where you're using your psychic powers to pick up things with your mind and hold them in front of you and then burn them or throw them and, um, or use them to solve puzzles. And then you can also use your power of clairvoyance, which is the ability to see the world from someone else's point of view. So oh. I can jump into your head, basically, and look back on myself. But then That's I can also weird. look over at the cameraman and jump into his brain, and then he can see someone on the floor and jump down to their brain, and you can navigate a space that way using clairvoyance. Do you have to leave breadcrumbs to know how to get back to your own brain, or you just hit a button and you go you back to yourself? Button. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Um, so, uh, and that's how you get around. So, that's awesome. um, yeah. That's it, it looks amazing. I mean, I really love how you've kind of kept true to the original style, but this is very much like a VR looking graphics. Yeah, I, we're using uh, Unreal 4 for the first time in this game and uh, with all the bells and whistles, and it looks beautiful. I think it's nice to see the characters rendered in a modern modern engine and, and looking nice. And it's really it's really kind of powerful to be in the space with them. Like you played the first game, you know, they're kind of at a distance. They're 3D, but they're still flat. But here you're like in there and Mia's face is right there. And you see Lily over there and you can jump into her head. You can hear her thoughts. And um, it's really just an amazing, VR is a great way to just really pull you into a world, which is what at Double Fun we like to do the most, is yeah. make a world and pull you into it. Super immersive. Now, when you guys were thinking about VR when it first became a reality, mm. was this the first title you thought of, or were you kind of like, oh, maybe this could work, or maybe not? Mm -hmm. We talked about, uh, you know, this is the exciting thing about VR, is no one really knows what to do in it exactly. There's no, like, exact recipe for how to make a game of VR. So we're like, what are all the possible things we could do? Um, and we kept coming back to Psychonauts of like, this is a world that we should explore, like, so that we have something that's, that we know and we know we like and a world that we really want to go back to and, and go into. So Psychonauts pretty early on came as, as the thing we wanted to explore in VR. Well, that's awesome. Okay, so he's got clairvoyance, he's got telekinesis. Yeah. What are some of the other, what types of puzzles does he have to solve with these things? He's um, going to have to, uh, well, he's going to eventually have to rescue Truman Zanotto and uh, find the other Psychonauts. He's, I don't want to spoil too much, but... Um, it's okay, this, you could be vague. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm used to that. This is E3. We can't yeah, yeah. tell you everything. You've got to play the game to find out. In this little demo, the most exciting thing that will happen is that someone in the back bathroom needs some toilet paper. And oh. you have to get <laughs> toilet paper and That's actually a very specific need. You're, you're a hero game. when you do that for someone. Yeah, I mean, you're trapped. So helping people in need is what being a Psychonauts all about. All about that. That's awesome. Okay, well, um, we cannot wait for you guys to finish that up. And yeah. any thoughts as to when we might be able to see some of that uh, in VR? We're aiming for this year, the end of the year. Wonderful. Well, That's awesome. It. Great. As soon as it's beautiful and ready. Wonderful. As soon as it's beautiful and ready. I love it. Now, I want to talk about Full Throttle. This is a game ah. that I never got a chance to play. Yeah. So I'm very excited that's coming, not only to PS4, but also to the Vita. Yeah. Now, Portrait. what was it like taking a game from that time, bringing it to the PS4, and still being true to like the original art design? Because yeah, technology's a, changed a bit. That's why I believe that the original people who worked on the game should be really involved in that. We did that twice with Grim Fandango and with Dan Henneckel. Both worked great on the, on the PS4 and the Vita. And um, part of that is just go to the, get, all the, get the band back together in a way. Like we <laughs> contacted all the artists who worked on it, and we said, here's what we're going to do for the art style, and we sent it to the artists, and they're kind of like, no, 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 no. And they, you know, they drew it. Cause it um, there's a temptation, I think, when you when you modernize something to just kind of overdo it and put in, all, let's do all the fancy things we can do. Right. And I think a lot of those older games like Dead the Tentacle and Full Throttle had a, had a stylized look that was 
you know, simple and, and, and wasn't meant to have a lot of details. And that was part of it, like a comic book almost look. And I yeah. think we want to stay true to that, but just have it look smooth and beautiful and like what we would have done at the time if we had the technology to do it. How did you find all those originals? Are you like hiding them all in your house somewhere? Do you have like a big vault where you store them all? No, <laughs> no we actually, I mean, because we were part of LucasArts and all the Lucas companies are all about archiving. I mean, they have a, a huge warehouse with Darth Vader's robe and everything from every <laughs> single thing, right? And so they have the, a flat file with all of the old drawings. We, we got to go out there and wow. look at it. Like, oh, I remember, I remember putting that in that drawer. And now it's in this climate-controlled warehouse at Skywalker Ranch. And That's so, so awesome. Yeah, we got to go out there and bring it all and scan it all and just hundreds of, of drawings. Because back then, there's a lot more analog production in the game. You know, you did a lot more on paper. So there's a lot of fun things. So we're going to put that in the game as a concept art browser. You can look at the original art for the game. Maybe some things that were even cut from the game. You can look at the concept art for that. Wow. And then here, commentary. We've got the one thing about getting the band back together is you can also strap microphones on them and make them look at the game and talk about <laughs> it. You remember the scene? And do a lot of fun commentary. So. Was it a longer uh, development process for the original or harder for now? I feel like they're almost about the same length yeah. of time. Yeah. And I feel like almost uh, more people played the newer versions than the older versions. Well, yeah, and that's what I love is that you're going to release the you know unaltered version mm. as a, as an option alongside the mm. new one, which is great because for those who played the original mm -hmm. are going to go back and be like, oh, I remember this, yeah. and then make it a new journey for all of us that get to enjoy for the first time around. Yeah, I think it means something different to different people. Some people want to play with the old graphics because that's what they remember, right. and they want to see it that way. But I think after a while they're kind of like, this is fun. But also I liked what they did with the new stuff. Yeah, it doesn't the jaggy pixels don't scrape my eyes <laughs> as much as they go. In, so I think a lot of people enjoy that. Too. Well, good luck to you. I, I, I cannot wait for you guys to finish all that up. And please come back again when you guys are ready to release yeah, it. And we'll totally. try it again. Yeah. All right, awesome. All right. Thank you so much. PlayStation.